Hello folks, in this video we're going to look at AC RLC circuits, do some time domain plots and some phaser plots, see how this all works out. So let's start off with a fairly straightforward circuit. We'll have a nice sine wave source and just two components, a resistor and an inductor. So we'll make this 500 ohms. And we'll give the inductor a value of 100 millihenries. And we'll say our source is 10 volts peak, sitting at 1 kilohertz. And we'll use this as our reference angle. In other words, we're saying this is 10 volts at an angle of 0 degrees. Okay, so what are we looking for? we would like to find in this circuit the voltage across the inductor, the voltage across the resistor, the circulating current. And we would like to do a time domain plot. In other words, what we would see on an oscilloscope. And we would also like to do a phaser plot, which is a more compact way of looking at this, for the voltages. In other words, for E, the source, VR, and VL. Okay? All right, so the very first thing we have to do is figure out the value of the inductive reactance. And we know that XL is equal to J 2 pi FL. So we can just plug the values in here. All right, F is uh, 1 kilohertz. L is 100 millihenries, so our k's and millis wind up canceling out, and x sub L is equal to j628 ohms. Now the impedance of this system, z, is the reals plus the imaginaries. We just have the one real, in other words, r, and the one imaginary, jxl. So that's going to be 500 plus J628. And if we put that in polar form, that would be 803 at an angle of 51 and one half degrees. Okay? All right, so how do we go about finding these? Well, we use the same essential uh, relations and rules that we would use in DC circuits. In other words, Ohm's law is still true, Kirchhoff's voltage law is still true. So we can go about it that way. Probably the most straightforward way, given what we're asking here, would be to find the current first. All right, so current is still going to be voltage divided by resistance, or in our case, impedance. So we can just sort of grind through this. All right, the voltage is 10 at an angle of zero. And then the impedance, because we're going to divide, it's convenient to have it in polar form. 803 at an angle of 51 and a half degrees. And that's going to work out to approximately, it's a smidge under 12 and a half milli at an angle of negative 51.5 degrees. All right, remember in polar form, you just divide the magnitudes 10 divided by 803 and then subtract the angle, right? Subtract 51 and a half from zero. So that's the circulating current. So now we can use Ohm's law, right? This is sort of uh, method number one, would be to use Ohm's law on this. In other words, we could say that uh, voltage across the resistor would have to equal the current times the resistance, right? Nothing new here. So the current we know is 12 and a half mils. And uh, the resistance value is 500 ohms. Right, so it's 500 and angle of zero. And when we crank that out, we're going to get 6.23 at an angle of negative 51.5 degrees. Okay, continuing. We look at VL, so same deal. 
I times X of L. Same current. And for X of L, right, we know that's J628, or you could say that is 628 at an angle of 90. And we grind that out, we get 7.82 at an angle of 38.5 degrees. Okay? All right. You could, if you wanted to, it's the second sort of approach, you could use voltage divider rule. All right? I'm not going to do this for all of them, uh, just to sort of illustrate that you could do this if we wanted to do VL. Right, well, you would take the source, E, times the thing you're interested in, right, which is going to be the JXL here, divided by the total impedance C. So we would take the 10 at an angle of 0, multiply by XL, right, which is the 628 at 90, divided by your total Z, 803 at an angle of 51.5. And that will, in fact, give you the same value over here, right? It will give you the same 7.82 at 38.5. It might be a little off because I'm rounding these, but it's the same thing. Right? So either way you do it. You can do the same thing, of course, for your VR, right? It would just be R over Z times E. All right. Okay. Now, I've got the two voltages. I've got the current. That's done. Let's go take a look at a, a time domain plot, okay? So what we're looking at here is something along this line. Um, first, probably be good if we drew down the uh, value for E. So I'll do that in black. Everything is going to be referenced to that. So, you know, I'll say my 10 volts is like out here somewhere. Right, make maybe little dots over here as a guideline. So our waveform is going to look. Try to draw a sine wave as nice as I can, which is not very nice at all. But you get the idea, right? Just pretend that's a nice sine wave. Um, if we were looking at this on a scope, right, the time period from here to here would be one over one kilohertz or one millisecond, right? One millisecond, half a millisecond, so forth. Okay, now let's take a look at the other parts. Okay, so it um, doesn't really matter which one we do first. I usually like to do the bigger one. Uh, VL, 7.82. So 7.82, you know, if that's 10, 7.82 is going to be up around there somewhere as far as the peak value. Um, and it's at an angle of 38 and a half degrees. All right, so that's a leading angle. Right? We know this is going to get pushed this way a little bit. Well, that's um, you know a little more than 10% of a cycle. Okay, um, you know probably about somewhere between 10 and 11% of a cycle. Which means time-wise, you know, if we had a nice scale here, since I know that's a millisecond, um, the push on this would be about you know 10, 11% of that. In other words, somewhere around um, 100, 110, probably like 108. You know. Uh, microseconds, right? So we can just kind of estimate that. I know it's going this way. And here's a quarter of a cycle. So there's um, an eighth of a cycle. So it's going to be a little bit less than that. So, you know, maybe out here somewhere. And it's going to peak, you know, over like around there. Of course, um, we'll wind up doing a nice simulation of something like this. A little later so we can actually get something that looks a little bit nicer than my freehand drawing over here um, but in any case you know we're going to see something like this so this this is our vl right and like i said this distance in here would be somewhere in that you know 107 108 microseconds or what have you all right uh vr all right, that's 6.23. So if that was 7.8, 6.23 is going to be down around here somewhere. And uh, so, you know, this is going to peak somewhere out here. It is, however, lagging at 51 and a half degrees. All right, so again, here's 90. There's 45. So it's going to be maybe somewhere around here 
Remember, it's a negative. It's lagging. It's later in time. So push it this way. So you know the zero the zero cross is going to be coming over here somewhere. Um, when it comes back, the other zero cross is going to be somewhere around there, and we'll continue. The peak, like I said, will be somewhere around there. That's going to come out like that, and so on and so forth. Right. So this is the sort of thing we would see on an oscilloscope, right? Um, we would use a couple of probes for this. I'd have one here. I'd have one here. Uh, I would use a, most modern scopes would have a math function so that you could subtract this signal from this signal. So you'd have three traces on there. Um, so th this minus this gives us VR, obviously. And that's how we could see this on an oscilloscope. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I just want you to kind of look at this. The red and the blue should sum up to give me the black. KVL must be true. It must be satisfied. Now, if you look at this simplistically, it seems like you're violating KVL because you've got a 10 volt source, you've got 6.23 and 7.82 volts. Right? So, you know, you look at that quick and you go, I got over 14 volts. I got 14 volts and I got 10 coming in. How did that happen? It all has to do with the angles, right? As a vector sum, this will still add up. When you add these two guys together, you will get 10 at an angle of zero. And if you look at this visually, right, my drawing is, as I said, less than ideal, but the red plus the blue should give you the black, all right? So you could see, you know, you're on sort of like either side here. So the, the black, you know, you're summing up the pieces of each and you would get it was drawn nicely, the black value. Okay. All right. Like I said, this is what you would see on a scope. It's a little cumbersome, however, to um, always sort of draw the waveforms this way. There is a more compact way of doing that, and that's the phasor plot, right? So we just draw the, the pieces as vectors. All right, so here's our imaginary axis. Here's our real axis. All right. So I'm going to put the pieces down. All right, plus minus J, plus minus real. So E, I'm going to keep my colors the same here, right? So E, this was E. E is this guy. Right, so here's, we'll just say that's 10 units, All right? 10 units, angle of zero, All right? Now, my VL, the VL, we said is 7.82 at an angle of 38 and a half. So, you know, 45 would be like this. 38 and a half is a little bit shallow compared to that. And it's maybe about that long. Okay, so we're looking at something that's, you know, maybe like this, all right? 7.82 in length, angle 38 and a half degrees. Great, right? Okay, now the VR. The VR, 6.23, a little bit shorter, and sitting at negative 51. So negative 45 would be like this, it's a little bit more. It's probably something like this. Okay, just trying to eyeball this. So that VR, 6.23, at an angle of negative 51 and a half. This might be a little bit easier to visualize because now you could imagine picking this VR up, right, do a head to tail thing. If you translated this up, right, you can see, oh yeah, that does add up to E, that does add up to 10 at an angle of zero. So there's my phasor representation, right? These three pieces. It will always be the case that that's 90 degrees in there, right? Between VR and VL. Um, remember, current and voltage are always in phase for a resistor. Has to be, 
right? That's basically Ohm's law. Um, on the other hand, you know, if you remember that for an inductor, current can't change instantaneously, okay? Uh, voltage leads current. So if we're going to talk about the current, right? Current lags the voltage. And it's always by 90 degrees. Okay, so if these two things are in phase, in other words, if the current and the voltage for VR are in phase, right, look, there's the minus 51 and a half, right, so I could sort of shadow draw here, right, this is my current, it's the same angle, right, um, so if that's the case, if these two things are in phase, but the current lags, the voltage in the inductor by 90 degrees, this is always going to be perpendicular, right? It's always going to be a right angle in here. Similarly, current leads the voltage for a cap by 90 degrees. Right? Remember, the, um, the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. Okay, so the voltage lags the current. The current leads the voltage, however you want to look at that. There's an old um, mnemonic that's sometimes used to remember this. It's Eli the Iceman. Not a lot of people employed as Icemen anymore, but, um, you know, it's voltage leads current, right? Voltage is ahead of current, and an inductor current's ahead of the voltage in a capacitor. So... That's what we're looking at here, right? That'll always be the case. If you change the values, if we were to change the frequency, for example, and, um, you know, X sub, X sub L would change, obviously the current changes, the angles change. So this whole thing might rotate one way or the other. In other words, the VL might be up like this, and then the VR would be flatter, or the VL would be flatter and the VR would be down more, but there's always going to be a right angle in there. Okay, so what happens if we have three components, resistance, uh, excuse me, resistance, capacitance, inductance. We have all three in there. Well, in a case like that, what would end up happening as far as your phaser? Obviously, there would be, you know, a, a VC in here as well, okay? Um, and as I said, you know, the, the voltage is going to lag the current. So if I have a current waveform, this, we would see the voltage coming over here somewhere compared to that uh, blue thing. Um, but as far as the phaser is concerned, you know, I would still have my E out here because I'm using that as my reference. And what would wind up happening uh, is we would have still 90 degrees between VR and VL, but it would have to be the case that VL and VC would be exactly 180 degrees out of phase. Right? One of these leads current by 90. One lags current by 90 either side. So that's got to be 180 degrees. Right? You know, when we plot the reactants, you know, X sub L is positive, X sub C is negative. They're always 180 degrees out of phase. So, you know, we might wind up, it all depends on the sizes of things, you know, we might wind up with something that looks like, uh, change my colors here to match up, we might wind up with something that looks like uh, this. You know, I could have a VR, like, you know, out here, okay? And then, um, you know, a VL that would be 90 degrees to this. So maybe that's coming out like this somehow. Let's see, yeah, maybe something like this. And then we would also have a VC, which would be right, 90 off of this, 90 off of this, and 180 off of this. So I might maybe have a VC that looks like that. So if you combined up um, the VL, VC, right, you'd take the... VL, put that over here. So the net value, right, the um, combined value of VL and VC would wind up looking something like this. And then if you added these two, you could see how that would give you the E. But you're always going to see this. You're always going to see this little orthogonal thing with VR like this and VL and VC making a straight line. And really all that happens is you change the values, as you change the frequency, as the thing rotates... And the sizes of these vectors you know, shrink and grow, but it will always balance out in a series circuit like this that it will sum out to whatever E is. 
Okay. All right. I think um, the next thing we're going to do here is maybe improve on my drawings. Okay. You know, my drawings are less than ideal. So maybe we'll do a simulation on this and that will make us happier. See you then.